this one for life. Yeah, yeah, we need spouses. Uh huh. Inside out. Okay, so. Thank you. They don't have to drive cars over me for a while. Okay, mics are hot. No. There's the desktop. Okay. It's it. The red D here. Yeah. Land. Our edge. <laughs> Oh, and I've got virus protection. It's coming, it's coming. Okay, all right. So all right, I should see a whole bunch of... All right. Number... All right. Are we ready to... We all here? Ringer silenced? <laughs> I'm going to stand up and do I'm just getting the words for the Pledge of Allegiance. <laughs> okay. okay. Oh. We're hot, we're waiting for Bandy. We're not wet. Go. Ready? There. We are hot. Okay, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. I'd like to welcome everyone to the August 10th board meeting of the Gross Hill Township Board of Trustees. Uh, let's begin with the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, calling the meeting to order at, well, let's make it 740. And the entire board is present. We can discuss business as usual. Find my agenda. And it, let's see, at this... <coughs> yes. Sorry. A little administrative function there. Okay, at this time, uh, we've convened the meeting, and I'll re entertain additions or deletions to tonight's uh, business agenda. Okay, with none offered, those in favor of approving the agenda as published, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? None offered. The, the uh, agenda stands approved. Uh, this time, I will turn over... Turn the microphone over for a presentation to my administrative assistant, Deputy Assessor. Good evening. Cultural leader. <laughs> First, we have a short video to watch that was prepared by um, Megan from... <laughs> Last fall, I applied for, through the DIA, to be considered as a community for the Inside Out program this year, and we were selected to have the summer 2015 exhibit here on the island. Um, the installation is the tape that you just saw that occurred on July 25th, and everything went very smoothly, as you can tell, and we have seven wonderful pieces of art throughout the island. Um, that you have a map in front of you uh, that will show you where all the locations are. And let me just give you a little bit of the history of the DIA Inside Out program. This is the sixth year of the program. The John S. and James L. Knight Foundation sponsor the program, which brings reproductions of masterpieces from the DIA's collection to outdoor venues throughout Metro Detroit. 
More than 100 communities have participated in the program to date. The mission of the Knight Foundation supports transform transformational ideas that promote quality journalism, advanced media innovation, engage communities, and foster the arts. We believe that democracy thrives when people and communities are informed and engaged. The Knight Foundation is involved in the 26 communities where the Knight brothers owned newspapers. And I'm sure you're familiar with the Knight Ritter newspapers. The Detroit News was one of those papers. So we are one of the communities that benefit from the foundation. The foundation has invested $841 million in community initiatives since its creation in 1950. The summer 2015 participants are Clarkston, Detroit Community Gardens, Detroit Riverwalk, East Point and Roseville, Farmington and Farmington Hills, Groziel, the Huron River Water Trail, Macomb, South Lyon and Wolverine Lake. The season will last from August 1st to October 31st. More information on the Inside Out program can be found at DIA.org under the Exhibition and Events tab. If you want to know how the uh, reproductions are created and how they stay so fresh looking, they are similar to a bumper sticker. They are vinyl, they are touchable, they are waterproof. The frames, though they look very expensive and very nice, are plastic. Uh, so they withhold all sorts of weather. We've had a lot of rain and they still look as fresh as the day that they were installed. Just as a note to the community and any um, groups that may be hearing this message, the DIA does offer support to community groups that would like to lead a tour, walking, biking, um, even a bus tour throughout our community to go to each of the uh, paintings to explain them and to talk about them. Uh, reservations are required to have a docent come, a volunteer docent come out to the island, and we would need a month advance um, warning in order to schedule this. Uh, some of the other uh, places where the uh, productions are besides township properties are at St. Anne Chapel, St. Thomas Lutheran Church, and Bishop's Cottage. So I would personally like to thank Father Mike Molnar, the Sacred Heart Parish Council, Sacred Heart Church, Pastor Sean Eubank, St. Thomas Lutheran Church, and Kathy Brock Miller of Bishop's Cottage for allowing placement of art on their property for this exhibit. Maps and additional information are available at Grosville Township Hall, Sacred Heart Parish Hall, St. Thomas Lutheran Church, and I'll be dropping some off at the Public Safety Building in the lobby for people who just want to wander in and pick something up. Uh, the DIA supports use of Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram to share your experiences as you view the art and have ideas. Um, the installation was already posted on the DIA Facebook page. We have two of them there, and we had many people from Grozio already go and like that, what they saw. Um, as I told you, what you have is a map of where the exhibits are on the island. I also gave you the press release that explains what the summer program is all about. And also at the township, they've made copies of uh, the young woman, Jillian Reese, who is the community relations coordinator for this project, came and taught an art enrichment class to various people that wanted to know more about the art that was coming. And the packet that she used, the PowerPoint, I printed out, and you've got a copy there. And it gives a little bit more detail about each of the pieces that have been installed throughout the island. And I've also made copies for any resident or anybody in the public that would like to come in and get something. Um, that's about all I had to say about it. I just wanted to make the general amount, announcement that it was um, installed and for our enjoyment through October 31st, and I hope that everyone will enjoy many times visiting the paintings and um, just appreciating that we were selected. Carol? Are there any questions? <clears throat> Carol, uh, do they do this every year? Will this be done again next year? Do you know? 
we could apply. They try to go to new and different communities, but we can certainly uh, apply again. There's no reason why we can't. That, yeah, but it's just an application be. process, and um, they picked, of the all the communities that they picked this year, six were brand new that had never had the um, ins installations before. But no, there's no reason why you can't apply every year, and I'm sure there are some communities that do. Uh, they, this is not paid for with taxpayer dollars. It is through the grant from the Knight Foundation. So the, the millage that you see on your tax bill, that is not part of this. This is totally a grant process um, from the foundation that supports this, this type of uh, venue out in the public. Carol, I, I wanted to thank you, too, for taking this project on and getting it for us. Well, it was, a, it was very enjoyable. Carol? Yes. Okay. <laughs> this is not also. Uh, I want to thank you as well. Uh, you're an example of somebody who does the legwork, doesn't just come up with an idea. You actually do the legwork, uh, go through all the, all the motions. Uh, this is an example as well as your garage sale. Uh, you're, you're a real asset to the township, uh, oh, the township hall. Uh, to the, you know, much. to grow seal itself. So thank you very much. Thank you very much. So Carol, I'm going to ask you to stay there for a while. Yeah. Right back too. My when comment this, is like theirs. When the uh, when the concept first came up, uh, Carol and Donna Henson went down to the DI and they politicked for us and uh, explained all the features we had at grow seal. One of the some of the constraints were they wanted it accessible, walkable, uh, cyclable. Not necessarily, you know, auto, so people can get to it, look at it, take their time, and enjoy it. If you, if you kind of put two and two together, you could see the the solitude. The lion by the seashore is at the parking lot at at St. Anne's, so it's uh, St. Anne Chapel. St. Anne got straightened out on that one. <laughs> um, but it, they they tried to match the pieces of art with the uh, locale it was installed, uh, and if you could. Bring the overhead projector on, and we'll. Sh I wanted to show the people the flyers we have available, and it's, there's a couple of buttons there. I don't know which ones they are. Uh, I think we'll get uh, we'll get our expert here to bring up the overhead projector on the Panja panel, you, you and that? yeah, we'll show people what, what what they're looking for in those in those handouts. So this is the map that shows where the various pieces are throughout the island. Uh, just outside the public safety building, the entrance near the building department has uh, uh, Madame, wait a minute, I got it right here in front of me. Yeah, Madame Paul Poiss <laughs> Poisson. And you know, the public safety building has, has uh, the one, anyway, they're scattered, they're throughout the island. Every one of them is accessible either by uh, foot or by bicycle or by automobile, any way you want to get there. And if you would, on the back of this flyer, these were from the DIA. There's some information on, if you would flip that over, there's some more information on the project. And then the, the one you want to have if you really want to impress your friends is this one. Do you have one of these to, to put on the... Because it gives, and go ahead and put, it gives a lot of background on the... Uh, artists and the and the piece itself so you can sound like you too are a docent so all these are available there's throughout the community and uh, once again carol it was uh it was a great asset it was a great unveiling we had art in the park which was actually art at macomb commons on the 2nd of august and uh our good friends in the city of gibraltar were kind enough to let us use their bus for lack of a better word a 26 passenger 25 26 passenger not a school bus but an actual a pretty comfortable little tour bus and they provided a driver and we had ran three tours an hour each and it was tough packing all seven stops into one hour um we probably ran 30 40 people and a bunch of other people showed up for the art in the park and then hung around for a bill bynum and company later so macomb common was pretty busy that day but that was our grand unveiling it was a lot of fun so again thanks to carol thanks to the the Grosseal Alliance for the Arts make a, a pretty cosmic day here in Grosseal. So, Carol, thanks again. This is this is this is neat stuff. And that is our presentation. With that, we'll move on to a brief public comment, based are uh, limited to the two items on the agenda today. And I see none offered. With that, we'll bypass the public comment. Move to consent agenda, Mr. Treasurer. Uh, Mr. Supervisor, I'd like to make a motion to approve Consent Agenda 15-045. Uh, that includes the uh, approval of the minutes of the July 13th, 2015 regular meeting. 
and approval of the check register dated August 7th, 2015. Support. Okay, moved by Treasurer Van Oss, seconded by Trustee Budney. Any comments from the board regarding the consent agenda? Okay, with none offered, those in favor of approving the consent agenda as published, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? None offered. That's passed. Uh, moving on to action items. Uh, number one, uh, Mr. Malvesto. All right, just give me one second. Oh, here we go. All right, uh, Mr. Supervisor, uh, the proposed motion is, based on a recommendation from the Community Recreation, Recreation Commission, the Groziel Township Board should approve the naming of the park located at the foot of East River and Groziel Parkway. The park shall be named, be called Sunrise Park. Okay, moved by uh, Trustee Malvester, seconded by Clerk Ranka. And I guess Miss Boyd is going to give us some background on the naming process. Yes. Um, well, just I guess some brief background on the park. It was acquired by um, the township in 2001, and the Groziel Land and Nature Conservation has worked very, very hard to make it a very beautiful waterfront park property. Um, the access to the water was put in by an Eagle Scout project, so there's been a lot of community involvement. Um, it's continually um, has they've had a, a lot of cleanups. They had large cleanups in 2012. The board, the stairs were put in in 2012. Um, so at this point, it's really general maintenance and updates and um, until we needed to name the park. So it needed to have an official name. So um, one of the CRC commissioners, Mrs. Ann Hainer Magaran, um, is the liaison to the park. And so she and a committee of two GI land and water conservation um, for land conservancy. Thank you. Um, two of their officers, uh, Mr. Riem and myself, sat on the committee. She had an island-wide search. Um, people were able to give names to the recreation department. They gave them on Facebook. Um, after a, there was like a three-week time period, and then there was some that were put in that were thrown around um, in previous years from the CRC. Um, we had a little over 50 names that were submitted. Um, we kind of whittled them down and had a vote and we decided on uh, Sunrise Park. And it was approved by the CRC at our July 22nd meeting. Hey, and that's been brought forward. I, when I was apprised of it, the first person I asked if he agreed with us was Peter Kantz. If mm -hmm. we all remember, he was instrumental in moving this project along and he said he was fine with it. So it's that's and it's fine with you. So it's good enough for me. And uh, any questions, comments from the board? With that, I do have to say that this picture um, was the first site cleanup that they did. Oh, hold what? on, not that picture. There's, there's buttons. <laughs> there's buttons to push. Would you just put computer? Oh, there we go. So this picture was taken the morning of the first site cleanup. And so um, I did not actually see this until after the park was, we had decided on it. And I thought it was a very appropriate picture that it was taken the very first morning that um, we kind of took it over and started cleaning it up. So Sunrise Park. It has become a very popular destination. Um, most people use it responsibly. We, of course, have a few problem children. But uh, overall, it, it's being <laughs> and, and anticipated. But uh, it is a real asset to the community. It's so beautiful. Thanks to everybody there who made it possible. All right. Any other comments for Ms. Boyd or Mr. Malvesto? With none offered, those in favor of, uh, based on the recommendation of the Community Recreation Commission, the Grosse Township Board will approve the naming of the park lo located at East River and Grosse Parkway with the name Sunrise Park. Those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Not offered. Thank you. So it shall be. All right, action item number two, Mr. Budney. Thank you, Mr. Supervisor. Yes, I have a motion to hire George Marks as a full-time TPOAM DPS maintenance two position at a beginning hourly rate of $19.81 an hour, subject to the terms and conditions as detailed in the August 6, 2015 letter of offer from the township manager and current TPOAM contract agreement. Okay, moved by Trustee Budney, seconded by Treasurer Van Oss. And I'm gonna- This has been a process. It has been a process. Uh, we had a committee uh, that we was put together, and I'll let, I'll let Dale uh, fill in the details on this. Thank you, Trustee Budney. Um, this position was budgeted for um, in 
this current fiscal year. And we advertised um, in the eel camera in com, and we ended up with a field of 21 applications. Um, and those of you that know me, um, we form a screening committee that's involved with DPS, um, and it was made up with uh, Trustee Budney, Chair Co Chairman Costick, um, um, Lorinda, John Kime, and myself, and uh, we take the applications and we make them as neutral possible. We make a copy, we take the names off, we take dates off, we take specific to the job application and job description requirements and they get a number. The committee then reviews these numbers, goes down the scorecard and we meet and say, give us our top five. And lo and behold, our top five were exactly everyone's top five. So we must have got lucky there. And uh, created that short list and interviewed all of those candidates. And the candidate we're bringing forward um, to you this evening, George Marks, was um, unanimously agreed upon as the top candidate meeting the qualifications, experience, um, very personable, um, and uh, very pleased and um, glad to recommend um, his candidacy. And um, on a side note, we also have other very good candidates within this group, and the committee's actually discussed and we're considering um, in the process of exploring the possibility of bringing forth another another individual at a later meeting. So um, we were very pleased um, that we had an outstanding field of high-ranking um, and quality candidates. Um, but clearly, um, our recommendation for Mr. Marks this evening is spot on as him being the top candidate as agreed upon by all. So um, Mr. Marks is here this evening. If you'd like me to introduce you to him, if you're available, please come forward. Hi, my name is George Marks. Uh, I grew up on Grozeal. Uh, I've done quite a bit of work out here for the DPW, and I'm excited to uh, serve my community. And I want to thank you guys very much for your support. Any other questions, sir? Um, questions, comments for Mr. Ream? Dale's already heard all my questions, so I don't have any. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and most of mine also. <laughs> so, all right. Well, with none offered, those in favor of uh, offering to hire Mr. George Marks as a full-time TPOAM, Department of Public Services Maintenance 2 position, at the uh, discussed hourly rate, Detailed the August 16th, August 6th letter from the township manager and the current TPOAM contract agreement. Those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Not offered. Mr. Marks, welcome aboard. <laughs> and John, I know you're going to work them like a pack animal, so. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but we have a lot of work to do, so welcome aboard. All right, that concludes. See, that concludes tonight's action items. We'll move on to uh, various reports. Uh, we'll start with uh, Clerk Ranka. Yep, so the clerk's report today, um, there is an election coming up in November on the 3rd. It is a local election for a bond proposal. Uh, some dates of note is by September 19th, absentee ballots, uh, or absentee voter ballots must be available for issuance to voters. And October 5th is the last day to register to vote in the November 3rd general election, um, which would be primarily new voters and new residents to the community. Uh, the clerk's office is accepting applications for election inspectors and receiving board inspectors through September 30th, um, in addition to being a, a great way to uh, meet members of the community and uh, serve some civic duty. Uh, it is a paid position, so we, we are looking for, uh, for applicants. Uh, voting will be open 7 a.m. to 8 p.m. and uh, voter absent or absent voter ballots um, will be available by mail until 2 p.m. on Saturday, October 31st. And that's it for the clerk's report. Okay, thank you, Mr. Ranka, Mr. Kirk, uh, Mr. Treasurer. Thank you, Mr. Supervisor. Uh, just a few items for the month of June. Gross Hill Township had a total of ten million seven hundred and fifty-one thousand seven hundred ninety-three dollars invested in various accounts. It generated an interest income of $3,607 at 0.32%, which it's going up. It's getting better. 
Uh, if you want a complete detail of all of the investments that the Gross Seal Township has, please go to grossseal.com and to the Treasurer's webpage, and it'll all be there item by item. Uh, the office has been collecting tax summer taxes from mortgage companies and individuals. Uh, those summer tax rolls are due by September 14th, 2015. Uh, extension for the summer tax due date is available for those who qualify. Yet the application must be submitted by September 14th. Uh, summer tax deferment applications are available at my office. Uh, approval of deferments will extend the payment <clears throat> from September 14th due date until February 14th, 2016 for those eligible. To date, we've collected about 14% of the taxes. Uh, we have a Commerce Park meeting next Monday. Is that correct? <clears throat> uh, there will be some discussion about the new runway. If anybody's interested, it'll be a good meeting. Uh, and I have nothing else. Thank you, Mr. Treasurer. We'll move on to uh, trustee reports and begin. Mr. Posey asked. Thank you, Mr. Supervisor. A few things to report on. Number one, those of you in the community have been watching the wooden bridges getting repaired. The bridges have been here for a while, and they've needed some maintenance and some, some repairs and restaining, and that is, in fact, happening as of about two weeks ago. Uh, as Dale has informed me, the, the bridges will be done repaired, but probably not all three of them will be stained prior to the August 22nd date. So uh, expect to see that they're going to be looking pretty nice by September 1st, by Labor Day. And uh, those are the, kind of our crown jewels of our bike path. Uh, bike path is going to be seeing repairs of its own in the, uh, in the asphalt area. And that'll start, uh, Dale, you said what, 20, the, the 24th of August. Okay, so, so we'll be working on those in September. As far as our f memorial fountain at the Grill Road, uh, right in front of the pilot house on the other side of the street, uh, the bricks are pretty much completed. There were some missing bricks. We had to scramble to find some, and I did find some. I have a great match, and I'm driving around with a load of bricks in my truck. So when the time comes to finish that up, I will I will be paying a visit to the fountain. The uh, Greenways and Open Space folks are going to be giving you a presentation at the next township board meeting that I suggest that you talk to your friends and neighbors and pay attention to it. It's about oak wilt. Uh, there's several people on Greenways Open Space that have worked very hard to, to give you an explanation of what could happen to our oak forestry here. And I would like to, to help people to understand that, and especially as it comes to removal and use of firewood on the island. There's a, there's a component there that, that we have to address. And I don't want to take away too much thunder because our primary present, uh, presenter, Pat Nielsen, who, who's worked her heart out on this, is going to give you a very good presentation. And she's had people from the United States Forest Service here looking and walking through our, our island at our, at our oak forest. She has managed to uh, line up a something, a something very special for August 22nd. We're going to have a 23-foot by 13-foot presentation of a forestry trailer. It's going to be set up in proximity to the Macomb Commons, and it'll, it'll help people to understand forestry in general. It's uh, going to be manned by people from the Forestry Service, and uh, I, I would hope that you get the word out, come on down and enjoy it. This is going to be quite a presentation. Not to forget my bike paths. Uh, the next bike path meeting will be next Tuesday at 7.30. Now, so, some dates to put in your calendars. Just one is one that I'm, because I'm a member, I'm very proud of. Uh, Sacred Heart Catholic Church is celebrating its 100th anniversary on the 15th. 100 years as a parish here in Gross Hill. That's longevity. That's, that's pretty nice. Uh, their celebration will be on August 22nd, but uh, if you see Father Mike, he's a, he's a nice guy. I tell him happy anniversary. You get a big kick out of it. August 22nd is going to be a busy day for our community. Walk the path. 
the thing that Tom Melvisto and I started last year and then Tom chickened out on it this year. <laughs> uh, he, he's going to ride a bicycle instead of cook. So uh, he's in the event. He's in, the, he's in one of the riding events, and I'll tell you about that in a minute. But Walk the Path is just a, an invitation to everyone on the island to come down to Meridian Macomb somewhere between 11 o'clock and 2 o'clock, have a free glass of lemonade or two, have a hot dog or two, cooked by me, and I am promising rare, well, and anything in between, and you can have the stripes vertical or horizontal. Uh, come on down and enjoy this with us. Barry Van England, one of, one of our favorite troubadours, is going to be down there with guitar in hand, and he makes me sing once a year, so you may want to move away from the island at that point. Uh, he, he's going to do a great job for us like he did last year. But that, that date has got a lot of things going on besides Walk the Path. Anybody here who enjoys bicycle racing is going to be loving this Barrel Doer event. Uh, Wayne State University's got a 100-mile bicycle race, and we're going to be at the tail end of it. Uh, there are in excess of 700 entries into this now and over 200 of them have enrolled for the full 100-mile course, which means they are going to be coming through Grosse Hill. So if you like to watch bicycle races, and it's open road racing, we're sharing the road with cars. Joe's hair just went gray. <laughs> <laughs> the, uh, the, the event is, is, is quite special. They'll be coming down the free bridge to Meridian, making a left, going to the Macomb Commons, and stopping off for uh, a hot dog, a lemonade, or a peanut butter sandwich. And uh, they'll proceed down Gross Hill, Gross Hill's Macomb. When they get to the East River, they will make a left-hand turn and go all the way to Horse Mill, follow Horse Mill again west to Meridian, and then take off down Meridian. So they're going to pass the Macomb Commons twice. So if you'd like to see bicyclists Pedal to the metal. This is this is the event to see. Uh, at that Walk the Path event, we're not going to be alone as Bike Path out there. DPS is going to be out there with an information booth about the upcoming proposal for road work. And I think that if you need good information, these folks have worked their hearts out to give you your very best information. We will also have recreation and barrel door representatives there. If you want to see more about Baradour, by the way, it's on our Grosse Hill TV. Thank you, Ted. Fit it in there very nicely. Uh, there's two great commercials on each one lasts about a minute and a half, so it's, it's fun to watch. And then uh, I think I should shut up now and let the second one go. Thank now, you. I won't let you off the hook. We also have the, uh, the Lazy Ride. Is that still on? The Lazy Ride oh, on sorry. the 15th? That's next Lazy week. Ride is on the August 15th. Which will be this coming weekend. Which is this coming weekend. And uh, then walk the path on the 22nd. Walk to school is tentative for October 7th. And bike Halloween. We ride we ride bicycles in the Halloween parade this again this year. So uh, the Baradour is is as I've told you about on August 22nd. And tour the eel is on September 20th. All these events are. If you can swing the camera over here, are on this flyer. We've got them in the back of the room, and we have them available at the administration counter. If you know, and we'll have Ted will have it all up on the website. So, a lot going on. Thanks to the Bike Path Commission. Thanks to a lot of the commissions. This has been a nice multi-commission effort, and just good stuff to do here on the island. Okay, thank you, Mr. Posey. Ask. Move on to. Uh, forgot Mr. the yard sale, oh, boss. I forgot about the yard sale. That's. <coughs> Shame on I'm, me. I'm, 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 I'm getting to that. I'm going to steal it out of you. I'm, I'm, I'm going to get into that. Uh, Ms. Smith. Um, Ted over in the communications department indicated earlier that um, we're going to be getting Sirius Satellite Radio for GITV, so that's exciting. So we'll be able to sw switch that out. Um, you know, I know that they've got over 200 channels, so during the holidays it'll be completely seamless music, which is great. Um, as far as the next Festival Commission meeting, that's August 19th at 7 o'clock, right here. Or not right here, but in Township Hall. Right, Randy? Okay, yeah. Um, that's it. I'm keeping it brief. <laughs> well done. <laughs> okay, thank you, Mr. Smith. Uh, Mr. Malvesto. Uh, thank you. Um, to begin with, uh, Brandy, we're having a meeting uh, on Wednesday the 12th, correct? 
And that said, I just want to verify the time. Seven, Seven o'clock, and it'll be here at the township. And we're also having our uh, our normally scheduled uh, CRC meeting on the 22nd. I... Okay. 27th. 27th, I'm sorry. All right, our regular scheduled uh, CRC meeting will be on the 27th at 7.30 here at the Township Hall. Uh, I'd like to uh, thank Mr. Posiak. Uh, he's absolutely right. I did, uh, I did beg out this year on the uh, Walk the Path, but I am registered to, uh, to ride in, in the Barador. Uh, I'm doing a 62 mile, not the 100. I just, my partner couldn't keep up with me. Uh, going forward, I'd like to say two weeks ago at the at Water's Edge, we actually had 27 kayakers go off uh, on that evening. Absolutely beautiful evening. That uh, that's our highest number yet. Uh, last week, I believe there were 12 or 13 uh, kayaks kayakers went off, and I would invite anyone who is interested in kayaking to join us on Tuesday night. Six o'clock at the north end of the marina. Uh, if you don't, if you have your own kayak, please bring it along. If you don't, you can always call up uh, Riverside Kayak and make uh, by by noon tomorrow and make uh, uh, plans to, and they'll bring a kayak down for you. Of course, you have to pay for it, but it's a great evening's uh, paddle and it gives you a chance to uh, enjoy the river, uh, the canals, the marshes. Uh, we we very low pressure. It's no, uh, it's not a race. But uh, if you're interested, please get involved. Uh, I think that's it for now. Thank you. Hey, thank you, Mr. Melvesto. I'll move on, Mr. Budney. Thank you, uh, Mr. Loftus. <laughs> uh, August 25th, Tuesday, uh, fourth Tuesday of the month, we do have a ZBA meeting, and there is a couple of appeals this uh, this month. Uh, so you'll you'll want to tune into that. Uh, tomorrow is our DPS meeting, and I would uh, suggest to all the people out there to, to remember that our DPS meetings are the second Tuesday of every month. And uh, it, I say that because uh, it gives you the opportunity, if you come to them, to ask questions about the upcoming millage. Uh, we want to get the word out to the people, the information uh, regarding this millage uh, so that you can make an informed decision come November uh, when you vote. So your opportunity is uh, every, every second Tuesday of the month we have our DPS meetings. We are going to uh, try diligently to get out to every group uh, that will have us uh, to uh, uh, put forth the information regarding the, the millage uh, so that we can uh, have the people of Grozeal understand what we're doing. And uh, that's it. Thank you, Mr. Budney. Move on to Township Attorney, Mr. Sorty. I have one brief note for you. The, the one pending lawsuit where all of you are members in the township uh, remains a party. Um, is currently on Judge Lita Popke's docket. Judge Popke is uh, with the retirement of Judge Dan Ryan. We'll be taking over a biz business court docket. And um, so with that, we'll, our, our case will be removed from her docket and Susan Hubbard will um, will uh, take over that. So there may be some changes in times. We haven't received any yet, but as soon as I have any changes in deadlines, times, I'll, I'll have it to the board. Um, but with that, the, probably the most important things is we've we've had some discussions with the opposing side on that, and I will tell you that I'm, I, I feel very good about some reasonable progress towards an appropriate resolution given the nature of that case. So that's all I have. Thanks. Thank you, Mr. Rosardi. In a, a finest legal fashion, saying <laughs> close to nothing, <laughs> but stringing us along yeah, with, yeah. Hope, with hope. Thank you, Tom. Um, all right, moving on, uh, uh, Mr. Reum. Thank you, Mr. Supervisor. Um, a few brief, well, one brief item, actually, I want to add. Thank you. Everyone covered um, s some of the big things that were going on, and I appreciate the, 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 the coverage and involvement by the board. Um, but... Uh, 
as we know, that ordinance officer has been off ill, um, and he, um, depending on his schedule, it looks like he's be coming back part-time shortly, but we also um, were able to make the arrangements and find someone that will help fill in and work with the township part-time. So we are moving forward, um, and we have been moving forward, as I reported last meeting between um, all the DPS and community development staff, myself, we've been managing these cases as best we can, and uh, now we have someone to help pick up, um, and that will make the transition um, when Mr. Gray returns much easier. So um, just so everyone knows, we do have staff on board, and we're addressing these matters. Anything else you think we should add? No, uh, I'm glad, you know, it just got to the point that we needed to add somebody to uh, to keep keep the program moving along. That's all, nothing else. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Riem. Uh, okay, I guess it's my turn. And no, I didn't forget the Island Garage sale. Most of these things I'll have, uh, we have the flyer in the back of the room for the garage sale. Carol has over 50-some-odd oh, people signed up already. Then that means in the last week before she'll have another hundred people sign up and probably another two or three hundred uh, who are not signed up who won't be on the map. But a lot going on on the 21st and 22nd. So I'm just going to ask you, there's going to be visitors to the island shopping. There are going to be visitors riding bicycles. Um, of course, we will make everyone here feel welcome, but let's be careful because there's a lot of people going to be driving and riding bicycles around here who are not familiar with Gross Hill Township, we don't want anybody going into the river or anything that, uh, any injuries that uh, we wouldn't be too proud of. So anyway, that's going to be a busy, busy day. Let's see what else do I have. Wally covered all the bicycle stuff. Uh, the concerts on the Commons continue Sunday evening, 7 to 8 p.m. Uh, let's see, there are flyers for that. But next weekend, the 16th, I'm sorry. Yeah, the 16th, it will be Mike Foran um, playing his guitar and singing. He's most of you know who he is. Uh, okay, that goes on through the end of the summer. Wayne County Hazardous Waste Collection, Saturday, August 15th from 8 to 2 p.m. at the Westland Shopping Center. I believe we have flyers in the back of the room for that. It's uh, Wayne County. It looks like that. Much of this stuff you can also drop off at Riverview, their landfill. Call and ask and see what's acceptable. That's a lot closer. The Let's see, the Simpsonian 5K kickoff classic saturday august 15th again busy busy weekends register online at www.active.com pick up an application at metro shores credit union high school or the rec department um that's and we have a f well there's flyers downstairs that most of these flyers you can find at the administration in at or near the administration office in the little rotating kiosk or you can just ask carol and she'll find them for you uh, i did mention thanks to the city of gibraltar for the use of their bus for the uh, art tour and i wanted to thank uh our township manager for moving forward it seems like on our blight don't like to use that term but our appearance our good neighbor ordinances our township maintenance ordinances we were going two steps forward and now we're in the one step back and we're we're, we're going to pick it up to two more steps forward uh we st we have a lot of work to do i'm getting calls all the time and we have an individual who's going to pursue those so we're moving on we haven't forgotten well, and thank you for that comment, but I would pass that to Lorinda Benito, our DPS director, for her efforts as well. Thank oh, you. And Lorinda, who has been honcho in the whole thing. So it's getting better. We have more work to do there. And you know who you are. Um, but we will, we, we have our ordinances. And again, we're either going to enforce them or we're going to amend them, but we're not going to ignore them. We, you know, property value is a, much of it is determined by appearance. And we're going to keep the appearances up. So thanks for bearing with me on that. That concludes my uh, comments. And we'll move on to our discussion item. And it says police and fire, but I only see uh, Chief Porcerella here. So it's all yours, Chief. But everybody got one of these in the mail. Is this, I'm sure this is yes, what you Yes, I just want to let you know that actually this uh, was the fire chief's project. He is tied up. Yeah. I'll be more than happy to go over whatever you like or just a little overview of the well, program. Let's put, let's put this on the, because uh, everybody got mailed one of these. Let's put this on the overhead. And basically the uh, first call name has changed to code. I just had it. I just had it in my hand. Code red. Code red. Oh, I'm sorry. It's up. So every, 
every every mailing address in the township got one of these. Correct. Because we got the bill for it, so we Correct. know what it costs to mail it. So everybody has one of those. Do we need to re-register those? Yes, what will happen is, um, due to technology, there is a lot more functions, and we have more ability with this new company that, that bought out uh, First Call. And there will be a register online, and, again, it's cell phones, whatever you get, your communication through you can put on there from your home phone a cell phone to if you want email if you want text if you want just phone call if you want just one your house phone or just one your cell phone whatever you want you can put on there there's much more that we can do on our end also with it and it's much easier um before we had to actually plug in the areas we wanted now it's a touch screen it's an actual like a radius we can show we can uh go through there and um, pick exactly what we want by uh, by a touch screen on a on a um, uh, new system that I think that just came out last year the year before, but um, the mailer you said has already gone out by uh, the fire department or it's a township. I thought the fire department did send it out, and from there you can read the directions. It'll have the website on there, and um, that's basically it. Any of the intricate workings, of the questions. I'm sorry, you'll have to refer to him. But um, he is tied up, and so I thought I'd just give you an overview of the, of the program. But it's a lot better program than we had. And again, with technology, everything's getting better. Everything's getting a little easier. Um, one of the main issues, as I stated, is we're able to, to go right on a screen and show exactly where we want by, by drawing it out. And it's quite a, um, it, it's quite spectacular of the new functions that they have. Okay, so. All you high school kids, show your parents how to work this on a smartphone, how to get a text message. Yes, have your six-year-old How to work text messages. Decide what's best in your particular circumstance. If you prefer it as a text message, a phone call to your home phone, to your cell phone. Um, email would probably be the slowest way of getting it. Text messages are pretty much instant, and they, that pushes information to you rather Correct. than you have to reach in. That's the way Michelle Babcock explained it to me push out information or make people reach in this is with the smartphones we can push this stuff out to you wherever you are you'll know what's going on and why you got this and you know give you an idea what you should do about it code red this is this is serious stuff this is uh this is emergency this isn't nice to know information this is need to know so once again get signed up as quickly as possible and uh hopefully we won't have to exercise this other than an exercise anytime soon, we might need to revise our emergency response plan to incorporate the capabilities of this. But it will make our residents safer. It'll make our community safer. So all for it. Again, get, so get signed up. Kids, tell mom and dad. <coughs> Anything else, Chief? Any questions uh, for so Chief Porcelli? Yeah, so just, just real quickly. So it's a reverse 911 system, so it's basically the, the DPS or the public safety getting information out to the residents. So could you just maybe go over an example of a type of message that people would get if they were signed up for the system? Uh, yes, what we can do is uh, everything from warnings of uh, uh, tornado, any very serious, anything that's very serious, along with our siren system. Um, there's also... Uh, a way where and we would use it if there's an area a specific area that we have a criminal issue or an ongoing event that's going on um, that needs attention right away and people to stay in or something to that effect if something's going on at the school or if uh, there's I I'm I don't foresee this but our chemical plants I'm glad have moved away that's just reality to me one less thing we have to deal with but the same as like the autofina incident um that they would be notified to what to do though shelter in place leave immediately so on and so forth so it can range from anything from a from a police actual issue to a weather issue to a an emergency um as a as I stated with like autofina, something to that nature, any type of emergency, but what it'll do is it will tell you on what device you want your emergencies and what to do once we talk and once we, we get it through and then go from there. So I yeah, hope we never have to exercise it. Hope we True. other True. than an occasional test. We run. have used the other one a few times in yep. certain issues, uh, a couple of severe weather issues where tornadoes have been spotted in Monroe County moving North, which, 
north end of Monroe County is right to us, things of that nature. I can uh, see something that was down very power close. lines is, it, you know, remind that's where people, we can stay away from them. Don't yes, touch them. That's where we can actually zoom in. Yeah. Before we had trouble, if we wanted a, an area, um, even let's just say 10 people in a in a cul-de-sac, we had a lot of trouble on the reverse 911. You just couldn't do it for that issue. Now you draw exactly where you want it and you can make it as big as you want, as small as you want. And it's much better that way and it's more usable. That way if there's something going on on your street that has to do with electricity, you obviously don't have to talk to somebody in the center section or even the area of Grow Road. But it was in sections the last time like that were large areas. And I guess the more you tell, that's fine. But we can specifically hit who needs to know about about what's going on and it, it, it could be like I said anything it could be anything that's um, if there's a water problem with the DPS let's just say where you we get some type of break and they have to boil the water in a certain area anything like that where it's public safety has to do with anything of that nature that's what we use it for okay thanks chief but we can't get this information out if you're not signed up so Correct. we'll be we'll be pushing this out forever I guess get get registered and uh, get on the information loop any other questions for Chief Force Rally? All right. Thanks, Joe. Thank you. All right. That concludes our discussion item. Oh, the one other thing on here, Joe, was the uh, 1700 radio. Was there any, or do we have any updates to that? I mean, we know the radius of that is about 50 feet. And uh, <laughs> that's not funny. <laughs> 62 feet. <laughs> no, it, uh, there has been some changes to that, and um, Duncan will fill you in on that. Okay. Um, but what we're trying to do is is get one main system where everyone will be on it, mm -hmm. and and that's what we're trying to do. We're still using that. We're still using seventeen hundred. We're doing it for the bridge, for the um, freighters trying to you know going by rather than trying to tell the people about it. But what we're trying to do is get the one main system down. So he will. Um, talk to you on that further if, if you wish unless tonight was enough for you <laughs> oh, no it's, this is this is information this can make lives for our residents yeah. better yeah we'll 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 drag chief murdoch here next time and you can fine do okay so all right you know. sorry to bug you on that joe it oh, was no, just on fine. here and there might be some questions that's so. fine thank you all right thanks chief all right with that um we'll open up to public comment you know the rules introduce yourself three minutes no slander, no false misleading information. <laughs> Mr. Clark, <laughs> as if by magic. We don't slander you too long. Okay, I want to see that slot Yeah, I want because I couldn't read it. Okay, so I'm going to read it. There's another park in the back part is what you can get on. Yeah, that's why. That's it, six panels. Well, I got two panels, and it was hard to read this. Okay, I had to use a mic. The one you got at home? Yeah, the one okay. I got at home. Okay, all right. Home. A little clearer, but the one I got at home wasn't clear. Okay, uh, Water's Edge. I asked for it last year, and I asked for it this year. Put a post in at the water so we can tell where the water is when we're hitting the drive. You're hitting the drive. Drive. You put the the post at the end of the water so we know where the water is. I'm, you're getting a blank stare from me. You know what I'm talking about, right, Steve? Talking about the ninth hole? Talking about the ninth hole and also the third hole. You put the, the stake in the water. You could have said pines. golf course, uh, yeah. Woody. I don't <laughs> yeah, know yeah, what yeah. you were talking about. <laughs> well, I'm thinking the yeah, marina yeah, and a post. Yeah, yeah. Well, I know where the water is. <laughs> it's where the boats are. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry, Woody. <laughs> Yeah, I know that, but but it's easier if you put the stake in the, water, in the ground for people who don't know where the water is, and you can't try to explain it to them. Okay, now, Randy, got it. We talked about this um, last meeting about you charging us so much money for this new project for the uh, roads. Now I asked Ann to give us a breakdown for hundred thousand, two hundred thousand, three hundred thousand. What it costs to the resident. You're on. Okay. 
Um, on the last board agenda, there was um, the board approved language for a millage to be put on the ballot on uh, November 3rd in the amount of $18,800,000 for um, uh, road repair and water main repair. For an a on average for not to exceed 20 years, the millage rate on average was going to be 2.1167 mills. So if you took an average household on Grozeal, which is valued at about 250000 which has a taxable value of 125000 the amount of that uh, millage would be $264.59. So uh, if you took a $500,000 home, which was taxable value of about 250, your bill would be $529.18. If you took a million dollar home, which was taxable at 500, um, it's a little over a thousand dollars a year. If you took a 15, we, we, uh, we get the idea. Yeah. There's some right, he wanted it very specific, it so I, I want to do people, it. So I want the people to know what right. they're going to. It's going to cost them. It's going to cost 2.1167. Well, I know that, but I'm just saying, if the you have a million dollar house. I, I want to. It's a little cost you four times. It's yeah. going to cost you four times the hundred, uh, the the two hundred sixty four dollars and fifty nine cents. So around a thousand dollars. That's correct. Yeah, real close. And okay. two millions, two thousand, and up from there. Two million, two thousand. I just want okay. the people out there, in land of don't know what's going on. Most of the people who have million dollar homes know what's going on. I know that, but they don't know what is going to get charged. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> uh, all right, thank you, Mr. Clark. Uh, other public comment? Mr. Walker. You'll have to excuse, excuse my wobbling. I've had some uh, medical problems recently. Oh. There was some discussion uh, at the last uh, Rec Commission meeting about uh, boats stored at uh, peak or on water's edge and uh, late fees for failure to launch on time. The contract which the, the winter storers sign has a couple significant points. All mo boats must be launched by the first weekend in June. This year it was June 7th and 8th, I think, or uh, 6th and 7th. Failure to launch uh, will result in late fees of $10 per day. This year, about a week after the, the boats were due in the water, there were 12 boats there sitting on land. The late fees for one week on those those 12 boats was approximately $840. Um, one of the, the other significant point in this contract is that the, the person owning the boat acknowledges receipt of the, the contract and agrees to be bound by the uh, terms and conditions of the contract. That means when they sign that contract and turn it into uh, the rec department, they're saying, if I'm late, you can bill me for it. On uh, June 14th, there were still 12 boats sitting there. Uh, and as I said, $840 for that first week. The township waived substantially all of the late fees this year. I don't know what Mr. Rooney did in the past, but this year I'm aware that there was a modification, or there, there was a waiver, and this essentially equated to a modification of the contract. Uh, I'm concerned. One of my concerns is that this modification could be a breach of contract. Mr. Budney or Mr. Sorty can answer that question. Um, let's see. The fees that were waived could have been used by Water's Edge or by the marina for either needed improvements or additional equipment at the, uh, at the marina. And I hope that in future years we don't have these blanket waivers of, of fees that are properly charged to the well holders or to the people that store there. Thank you very much. Hey, thank you, Mr. Walker. Other uh, comments from the public present? Mrs. Walker. 
I just have two questions quickly. Um, back in, I think, June, uh, Trustee Bundy asked for, about the fundraising for the all-season rink, and I was, and so I went to a, a rec commission meeting after that, I think in July, and I asked the question of the uh, chair, and I was told that within a week, we would have definite plans. And I was just wondering, since it's what thirty-six, thirty-eight thousand that they still have fundraising, has there been any movement forward? Does anybody know? And secondly, my, uh, the Splash Park. We just had a lovely, you know, you guys had a lovely discussion about it, uh, the status, which seems, I, it, it seemed like you guys were on ice that was cracking. I, it wasn't for solid footing. So my question to you is, has there been any expense toward it now? Have you moved forward with any expenses toward this so that if you c cancel the project or revote it or whatever you want to do, how much are you out? Have, how much have you put in? cash-wise. Those are my two questions. Thank you. Okay, that'll take some research. Thank you, Mrs. Walker. Other uh, comments from the public present? All right, with none offered, um, entertain a motion to adjourn. Second. Support. Okay, moved by Trustee Bundy, seconded by, was it Mr. Malvesto or Mr. Posey ask? Posey. Those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 None opposed, none offered. I'll call the meeting adjourned at 841. Everybody drive carefully. Sign up for the uh, code red, please. <laughs>